Coming up today on Locked On Texas Tech, thoughts from Joey McGuire on change being in the college football wins, and we get to a basketball roster churn report next on Locked On Texas Tech. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're going to start this thing off right. Raider! Everything runs through Lubbock. Great to be with you again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Always free and available on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. And today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today. You're going to get $150 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more hits. So visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started with the only Chris Level. I'm Casey Cowan and Chris Great to be back with you, my man. If I was going to FanDuel to place a bet that I felt like was secure, it would be that nothing remains the same for too long in the world of college football or maybe just college sports at large. We'll talk a lot of change today, and even if we're not talking about some in-game changes, let's look into the future a bit as well. Wanted to get to some continued roster churn that we know will be a part of this upcoming offseason for Grant McCaslin and the Red Raiders, but We'll kick off our conversation mostly in a college football category, although this does impact already uh, some other sports. And we'll get back actually to a mention of Grant McCaslin and his basketball program. But you may have seen this week or over the last few weeks, you may remember from the Texas Tech Bowl game, some new things being implemented. Now, a couple more things we'll talk about beyond just in-helmet communication, which is something we saw a part of the bowl game between Tech and Cal, but proposals for tablets and the like to be on the sideline not too much screen time want to limit that as a new parent i'm told that every day maybe 10 times a day limit the screen time everybody uh but also a proposal that kind of came out of left field to me a two-minute warning possibly coming to college football and we'll get to some thoughts from red raider head coach himself joey mcguire on some of these things but it kind of seems like just from a fan standpoint chris some of this may be ho-hum or not all that noticeable i guess if you're talking about tablets or things like that but you better believe in game there are competitive advantages or possibly disadvantages uh, for a team that's able to utilize this or the communication or maybe even a two-minute warning at some point in time so pretty interesting as you get into it and the future of what college football could look like how do they how do some of these things sit with you and what do you recall now looking back a ways uh, following the bowl game experience and some of what you heard about uh, what was going on with the in-helmet communication Texas Tech got to be a part of. Yeah, because I think some of the bowl games were like trial runs, and I think the way that worked was both schools had to agree to, yeah, let's let's do this. If one school didn't, then they, they, they wouldn't do it. But I think, yeah, Texas Tech and Cal was certainly one of the games uh, that uh, used it. I, I think it was it was new, and so it was kind of interesting because I think really it wasn't about game day and and how this change is going to be implemented. It was really about, okay, if we're going to do this, we have to change completely change the way we practice because if you're using it in a game, you're going to have to practice this way. And so you've got, you know, like Joey McGuire and Zach Kitley and Tim DeRuiter or whatever, they're they're off to the sidelines uh, or off on the sidelines during a practice for days and days and days leading up to this on a walkie-talkie, talking to like, okay, we're going to eliminate a lot of these signals and all these things. And I think, I think that's a bit of the rub right now is that in the bowl game and like the trial period, I think they let multiple – players on each side of the ball have the headset and I remember talking to to Baron Morton too I'm like I'm like show me and it's just this little it's just a little speaker in his helmet and he goes it sounds like you're going th- you know how like the speaker like when you're going through a drive through <laughs> and it's not like HD sound if you will but right. it's just semi muffled but he goes you can clearly hear you know, and that's why you see those NFL quarterbacks, they they cover their ears up just so they block out the noise. But he's like, it sounds like I'm I'm in a drive through. Yeah, like an airline pilot. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and so um, but but now the discussion is because they let multiple players on each side of the ball at the same time while on the field at the same time have the headset in their uh, helmet. 
and I think the one of the proposals now, or like what's what's kind of, I don't know, gaining some traction, and and none of this is official or, or anything, is that they're saying, hey, okay, let's let's be like the NFL, one green green dotted helmet per side of the ball. That's what the NFL does. You get one defensive player at the quarterback, the end, and. I, I but I, I'll just say this: like from a tech standpoint, they all loved it. I think coaching staff loved it. The players loved it. I think it was, you know, I, I think they would embrace this change and say, absolutely. Uh, it, it just made made things smoother. It modernizes things. Uh, there was some concern initially about doing this because who you're going to modify this helmet ever so slightly. Because I saw the inside of it. It's like not really you, – you're just adding a wire and a little speaker that you're gluing to the inside of the helmet. But nobody wanted to take uh, responsibility for the liability on this helmet now that had been slightly tweaked. Hmm. Helmet company was like, this isn't our product. Like, we, we made this helmet, but now you, you've altered it a bit. So now we're, we're not – if something were to happen here – we're not liable. And so what was the school going to take? Okay. Now if something happens, we'll, we'll cover any sort of issue. Uh, you know, it, it's just, but I think they've gotten that squared away. And so I think it's, it's going to happen. It's just a matter of how and what it looks like, but I'm, I, I think it's great. Um, and I think that, but that's the thing. It totally changes the way that you practice now. You know, um, and and I think that is the biggest adjustment, or will be the biggest adjustment for uh, a lot of coordinators, quarterbacks, teams in general. This is coming up. Uh, all these changes we'll talk about uh, mid-April uh, to be decided upon. Yeah. I think April eighteenth uh, was the date I saw, and something that I guess I hadn't considered, and maybe I'm just not paying close enough attention. Um, and I'm not even sure how I how I feel about whether or not this is what it's really rooted in, but. I've seen a lot of reporting, you know, to indicate that this is close to an immediate reaction uh, to the Michigan story this year. Do, do you buy into that, or has this been more a long time coming than just kind of this news cycle? Yeah, because you're you're talking. This is going to be decided in uh, what did I hear you say April. And April eighteenth. It, it, it's yeah. for this year. Like I mean, yeah. like if, if they pass something, I think you're talking like we're going to be dealing with this this fall. Uh, like I, I I think the Michigan stuff. Uh, probably fast tracked it a bit. Um, I think there's some argument, counter argument going on about because here's some of the dynamics here. Like when Baron Morton steps up to the line of scrimmage, um, he won't be able to hear his coordinator because I think they're talking about it like the NFL with 15 seconds left on the play clock, it communication cuts off. Yeah. You know, and so that's when, okay, now. Now I may have to signal, okay, well, and they're saying, and 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 you've got, you know, defenses that are going to wait to adjust to whatever they're doing until 15 seconds left on the play clock. And then, okay, now they'll switch their their look. This is what the game that the NFL, this is the cat and mouse that the NFL plays yeah. every Sunday afternoon uh, on, on these things. We'll show you something. You're going to be told, hey, look for this, look for that. And then as soon as 15 seconds comes in, okay, now we're going to, we're, we're going to switch it and, you know, you know, um, head because, games. don't pardon the fun. That's right. I mean, and that's why you want really smart quarterbacks that, uh, that know what's real, what's not. And, and, and all those things, but and linebackers and, and coordinators. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, but you know, right now the argument is like, okay, cut off time. Yes. No. When it, how many players can, can have this? What is, what is smart? Because there, there's some concern that, it will only enhance sign stealing if you do it like the NFL, 15 seconds and whatever, because at that point, everybody starts to adjust and, and all those things and that there, that would be ramped up even more, um, you know, and so, and it's also, there's the one argument about this is going to lead in I mean, like uh, these, these offenses in college football to just go back to going as fast as you possibly can now. Because we're, we'll, we'll we'll just outpace the 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 clock and the ability to adjust and counter adjust, and we'll we'll just put our foot on the gas and we'll just get after it. Uh, so <laughs> I, I I don't. There's lots of theories and lots of uh, thought process there, but I mean it's they're trying to modernize the game, and I get it. And uh, but but changes are coming. The one that I had no idea about though, Callan, was the two minute warning. 
First, today's episode brought to you by eBay Motors. And eBay Motors has you covered with everything you need to maintain your vehicle and keep that ride or die ride on the road. Or if you're just looking to elevate your car's game to the next level of performance, they got what you're looking for. With roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, superchargers, and accessories of all kinds to fit your style, whether you're looking for speed, power, or design, eBay Motors has you covered with over 122 million parts to perfectly fit what you need. So just head over today to ebay.com slash motors, where you're going to always find exactly what you're looking for. And with no risk because of eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit just right every time or your money back, keeping you burning rubber and not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want. It's easy to keep your ride or die ride on the road and moving your life forward at ebay.com slash Motors, eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, exclusions do apply. The one that I had no idea about, though, Callan, was the two-minute warning. I had not heard that mentioned ever, and all of a sudden the other day it's like dropped in your lap, and you're like, huh, okay. Uh, gives everybody another timeout, and it gives the, the TV folks one more commercial break. That's what I wanted to ask about because I thought we just got uh, to the point where we were, or past the point where we were Speeding impacting the, the clock up. rules and <laughs> you know, we're not going to stop it anymore after first downs after a certain point in time and yada, yada, yada. And now they're coming back and saying, wait, let's throw in a two minute warning. Is this only from an advertising perspective? I mean, that sounds like kind of crazy to even consider, but I guess not because that's what makes the world go round. The reason why you see these uh, palaces built is because of television ad dollars at the end of the day. Thank you, Gatorade or whoever's at the top of that list. I mean, truly. Um, but is that is that why they're putting this? I, I don't really get, and I'm not, I don't really have a strong feeling one way or another. I don't care about a two-minute warning. Have it, don't have it. It doesn't really change my, <laughs> my enjoyment of the game or anything. I love uh, the NFL as well, but I really wonder what is the root of this, given the fact that we just made some changes to try to speed up the game. What do you make of that? I, I think there's a variety of things that come into play here. I don't know if anybody would pin down one over the other. I think you are, I think it does add an extra, you know, spot to advertise, um, you know, so I think, but that's not, the TV folks aren't basically like, nudging the, the these college football folks going hey man i'm gonna noogie you you don't you don't include this deal but i mean that that's a part of it we'd be naive to think to think otherwise i think there's some thought it may make the end of games a little bit more interesting or or you know give somebody uh you know maybe another bullet in their gun to fire you know just to be you know have an extra time out you know yeah. one, one of those things um i think that you know like here's this aspect is that this is this is what the NFL does. It's standard. It's not out of the norm. The NFL has been doing the two minute warning for years, and I think that NFL general managers or or coaches are going to love that college football is going to do it because it allows more college players to to understand how their the the next level works, right? You know, and like quarterback specifically. I mean, all, all the you know so. It just adds another layer like, well, you know, you, you did this in college. You know, this is how we do it here. And, you know, all yeah. these things, it's like one more NFL uh, type deal. But I, I don't know. That one was just, like I said, it was just out of the blue. Um, I think it's just a combination of things. But I think that you have to, you know, it it, give, it gives teams a chance that maybe have burned through their timeouts. Maybe it can, you know, just gives them another freebie to stop the clock. But also, you know, yeah, the, the TV partners, I'm sure, are – going Puff, if y'all want to do this that'd be great you well know, we sure could, we could sell yeah. some more uh, advertising hey, to guys. uh yeah we didn't right. even think about that yeah if you want to do that go ahead that's a great <laughs> idea <laughs> we can get another we can get another fan duel commercial yeah what, what a lucky there. coincidence yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right you got it um as far as the in-helmet communication that's not the only technological advancement i want to get to the the tablet aspect of this and some of what's already happening uh in college sports with these things but you know, back to the, the in-helmet communication and some of the sign stealing aspect, you know, some indicating that uh, sign stealing will be at an all time high yeah. because they talk about the National Football League, as you pointed to, being all huddle. That was one quote I saw 
so talking in one headset would make sense. Talking about the college game more so being no huddle. Now, Texas Tech had multiple players on the field with in-helmet communication in the bowl game, but this proposal is more so talking about a single player uh, having in-helmet communication. And Joey McGuire uh, was actually quoted on some of this saying, in part, quote, the current proposal will not fix the problem in college football. He goes on to say, we should not limit this technology to just one player on each side of the ball. We also shouldn't always compare our game to the NFL. Our game is special. Let's keep it that way and put together a proposal that gets it right the first time and not fix it years later. I don't know why he would assume that college football would just continue to tinker. That doesn't sound like something that they would ever do. But uh, <laughs> what do you think about Coach McGuire's thoughts there? Yeah, he he's uh, he, he he's – you know, he talks to a lot of people. So he's kind of coming at this from, you know, let, let's, you know, we're already kind of talking about tweaking it. Let's just, let's just go all in with it, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. And I don't know where he sits on like, is this, is this the popular stance from, from the masses? Is this, is he on an Island here in some ways, but I'd be willing to bet you that he's got a lot of support for his thought process uh, or he, he uh, others would share his same thought process by more players having it, all that stuff. Yeah. The, the tablet stuff is fascinating because I think I, I think it's correct that they would only allow him to use it at halftime. Is that right? Well, I've seen it reported both ways. The proposal would be either suggesting use on the sideline, but okay. there was originally a limited Halftime okay. amount of tablet time, so I don't know what to expect. But yeah, uh, both are in the air right now. It's very confusing. On okay, what's being talked about? What what's being pushed? Uh, what, what's what's the reality? What what? Because the NFL obviously they use they use these Microsoft surfaces. We see that you know you know yeah. uh, product placement you know kind of shoved down your on a Sunday <laughs> afternoon. It's like Every week. guys throwing them or guys just like looking at them or whatever. Yeah, it's like they just go there with that. Um, deal is pretty smart uh, money spent by Microsoft on that, but they use it during the game. Quarterbacks are sitting down, you, you know, and all that stuff. What, what's What's interesting is that to note is that, um, like, I think uh, North Texas was in a league last year where Grant McCaslin was coaching, where they used some tablet use during the games for the last couple of years the technology has been there and this was a trial for for basketball coaches now the big 12 is 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 absolutely all in on it and so it's adjusted like who sits where down there by I mean, we're talking basketball now but they're they're using you know I guess, I guess it's like it's, it's an iPad I guess and it, it's it's hooked to you know, the replay system and the TV feed and everything. And, and it's, there's somebody right next to me that is like kind of tracking the game and like labeling each play and all these things. Mm. But Grant more often than not in a game, he'll, I mean, there, there's multiple times where he's like, Hey, show, show me that last play or, Hey, go back to that last deal. I want to see whether it's a call by an official or whether it is, um, uh, you know, a set or one of his own guys not doing what they're supposed to, he looks at it all the time. I mean, sometimes this is rare, but sometimes it's like back to the game. He's looking at that deal, and he'll turn around and be like, "You didn't screen, or I just watched it. You blew that call. Whatever it may be. I mean, <laughs> you know, I can't really hear what he's saying, but yeah. that that's the premise. But I mean, football wise, I think it would be interesting, and I'm, I mean. I don't know what it would hurt to use them in in game. I'm sure somebody's going to try to be up to no good with it. But if you're doing this, I don't know what like okay, you can only use them at halftime. What what's that even do for you? You know, I mean, uh, and you got guess coaches. I assume they already were to be yeah, honest. Yeah, and you've got coaches up in the box that are they've got a TV feed right yeah. now because they're the ones that are like, hey man, that ball came out, challenge it or or stuff like that. So. I don't that that seems minor to me. They should just let uh, and and if from a technology standpoint, or I've, I've heard like, well, well, how costly would this be? Pfft, give me a break. Uh, you know, it, you, you, so you know, what, what's the cost of, of buying, you know, a, a, a eight or nine more iPads or whatever that you use to uh, for sideline use? I mean, that that's that's nothing, a nothing burger. And I suppose I just anticipate we're going to see all these things come to pass in some form in helmet communication. How many guys? Multiple guys, single guy, 
Not sure what to expect there, but again, maybe mid-April we'll have some clarity on that. While we're on the subject of Grant McCaslin's basketball team, First, today's episode brought to you by Amazon's Fire TV, your destination for sports from live games to highlights and beyond. Fire TV offers incredible viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick, which you can just plug, boom, right into your existing television. And you got access to millions of movies and television episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the upcoming college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. And that's not all. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from all of your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. So check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV or Alexa devices. And if you haven't done it already, you don't know what you're missing. Trust me on that. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. Let's talk roster churn, Chris, because we know it's coming. March is upon us. The end is near, though hopefully not too near for Grant McCaslin and the Red Raiders. But uh, I've had some questions in the YouTube comments. Uh, this week and last about what to anticipate this offseason. And obviously, we're in a new era from a college basketball standpoint where recruiting is kind of a different conversation as compared to previous eras when it comes to you know how you hit the prep level or the high school level versus transfer portal stuff. And I know that some of this will remain obviously very fluid because we'll have to consider some decisions made by some guys as to whether or not uh, they remain or not. And the same goes for the coaching staff decisions made for some guys as to whether or not they remain. But what do you think we're in for as far as this experience for Coach McCaslin and his first complete kind of roster assembly cycle whenever the season does come to an end? I guess I'm bracing for anything like major, major churn, halfway churn. <laughs> What's the churn radar <laughs> looking like <laughs> as we near the end, you think? I bet at the end of the day, you end up with a you, you maintain a really solid nucleus that you you add to. Um, I, I, that's my thought about what I I believe what will happen. But yeah, you'll get halfway churn. Uh, I, I would say it's not going to be a total, but but you just don't know. You know, you, you ultimately don't know how this works. I mean, like. As it stands right now, I I think okay. So Joe and Warren, they've exhausted eligibility after this year. Need to replace those guys. So you're going to need a big man and a point guard. Okay. Um, you you know I think Demorion Williams. I think it, this is his last year. I think that's right. But he's not playing. Um, and so that that would be a spot I would guess. So that's three. You know Drew Steffi's scholarship and spot that's four and then you have you know like okay well what's the Kyron Lindsay situation here many people have already skipped to the end and be like okay he he's th this isn't you know that their spot number five what, what a lot of people feel like um you know whether that can be salvaged or not I would say that's tenuous at best uh so that that would be five spots right there and then you haven't even really you know thought about anybody on your side of it that maybe you do want to keep that is like, man, you know, I, you know, you're not paying me enough. I'm not getting to play enough. I don't know. But um, like, and, and like Lamar Washington is an interesting case. Yeah. You know, does he, does he, you know, he hasn't gotten to play much at all. And does he, um, does he want to seek more playing time elsewhere? Is you know, is there a better fit for him out there? I mean, he would be well within his right to go, man. I appreciate everything everybody did for me here. I love it here, but I just I want to go play more. I'm about to be a junior, you know. So I mean, you, you're 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 in the four, five, or six spots just right there. Yeah. You know. So um, and 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 there's always the unknown. You know, there's always the oh, didn't see that coming. Good, bad, and different. You know, I mean that's. Um, and like, cause I think right now, Devin Cambridge, the thought process is that he would, he's going to come back. I will tell you this about Devin Cambridge though. You know, he's coming off of that injury and I don't think that he's necessarily going to be ready and just, just, uh, you know, out of the gate, good to go. Like when the season starts next year, you know, he may have to ease into that. You may not get the best of Devin Cambridge, you know, until, 
mid December, you know, for all we know, as he kind of, you, you know, gets back and finishes up rehab and kind of transitions and gets his legs back under him. You, you see what I'm saying? So yeah. that may be a bit, a bit of a process. So you have to remember that when you start adding to this deal, but I, I, I'll, I'll just say, well, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I was just going to say on Cambridge, that would almost make me think for a guy who's going through a process like that and has gone through a process like mm-hmm. that with this staff or this training staff, and maybe I'm just hoping, but it would almost seem like you would want to uh, remain engaged with those same people. It's kind of hard to envision somebody like that wanting to be on the move. And yeah, he, and he's going to come back. Yeah, he. he I, I think that's the plan right now is that you're going to get yeah, Devin Cambridge will be a part of this thing. I think he's already based on exactly what you just said. Like I like it here. People like me here. I love the staff. Yes, we do. Um, I, I love the training, you know, I mean, all, all the things. So I think, yeah, he, he absolutely, I think, has plans on on playing another year here. Because, see, this would have been it for him. Yeah, you super know, senior, I, right, I think. I believe so, yes. But now Still he's trying to injury. figure out the COVID eligibility, the bonus eligibility. I know. I'm ready for that to fall off, i got to be honest. Well, because as you sit here and ask me, I'm not even really sure who's going through senior day ceremonies on Saturday. <laughs> Like I, 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 I legitimately don't know. I mean, I think Warren, yes, Joe, yes. I think, uh, you know, I, unless there's some sort of asterisk on on their bios, I think this is it for them. Um, you know, but like uh, after that, I'm not, I'm not, because I mean, I, I spent most of the season uh, or earlier in the season thinking, okay, Kerwin, this was his last year too, because he listed as a senior, and I just hadn't thought it all through or done the math. But like, no, he can, Kerwin Walton can come back here. You know, I'm like, okay, sure. Come, come, come shoot some threes next year again. So there, there, there's just, you know, I, I, I'll, but I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Texas Tech is not, you know, I think, I think their thought internally is that you will not catch us again out here on the streets without this lack of depth, uh, lack of size. It won't happen. So you, you better get us now. Um, and, and, you know, some of this was out of our control. Some of it may, maybe we, we, you know, could, could have done a few things differently last summer. We're putting this thing together and some of it just couldn't be helped based on timing and availability of players. I mean, and the coaching change and all this stuff. But I, I think now that they've been through it, uh, cause the, Cal the portal opens up, I think it's March the 18th, hmm. which is the Monday before the, uh, NCAA tournament. So that for the first four will be on that Tuesday. Uh, the first and second rounds will be on that, you know, Thursday and Friday. But that Monday, the portal opens, um, and I think it. I think uh, you know they they tweak this all the time uh, with the dates and the windows and all these things. But I think yeah. it's like opens up then, and I think it shuts down on May first. So you got to get in by then. But th- there'll be a lot of movement, uh, a lot of movement, um, and then you have coaching changes and all those things, and so. Yeah, expect some some of this stuff to start shaking out fairly quickly. Yeah, the rules are made up and the classifications don't matter, at least still to this point in time. Um, Hunter Dickinson can come back again for Kansas. <laughs> I mean, don't we have a ninth-year college football player somewhere, I think, that's going to kick things I, off in the fall? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so really nice. a wild time, continues to be a wild time. And Texas Tech, I suppose, will continue to be uh, very portal-heavy as far as assembly, assembling a roster, right? Well, there's a okay. How many high school players or players did you sign in November of this this cycle? Yeah, that was I mean, a goose you, egg, you, right? <laughs> you you are you, you're you're in on some high school guys for next year. I, I think the best way to look at this is kind of there's a there's a healthy balance of you want to have a little like a what Baylor does with like they, they play a few freshmen. But they're different. You're not playing like Oklahoma State type right. freshmen. These guys are like one and done types. So if you can ever find one of those, and I think uh, was it Kingston Flemings, I think uh, the Tombs kid, the big man, those are a couple of targets for next year's cycle. That if you could sprinkle, you know, those guys in there, and then you surround them with age and experience, and kind of bring them up like you have with Pop. For example, you know, um, yeah. you just can't go all in on freshmen, and I don't know if anybody's wanting to just to go all in on on portal and keep having to 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 turn it every year. Uh, that's why I think the the Darian Williams and the Chance McMillans are the perfect 
portal because yes. it's like, okay, they can help us establish a culture. We get to know them for, for a period of years. We can watch them blossom and help develop them a bit. It's not just a one and done type situation. Not that you're going to thumb your nose up at a one and done. Cause I mean, look at what Joe and, oh, sure. and Warren, uh, because they, they provided uh, all that and more too. So yeah, really got to be the right kind of guys. I think even more so character wise, if you're going to get a small amount of time from them and expect them almost immediately yes. to not only maybe acclimate to a culture, but help to establish or set the standard for the culture, which is kind of what uh, they were asked to do in uh, one year with Coach McCaslin. So, yeah, about mid-churn status is what the forecast looks <laughs> well, like. Well, I mean, we'll see. And, I don't... Uh, well, it sounds like, you know, definitely less than what we got uh, a season ago, but I think it's just the nature of the beast. You're going to continue to have mucho turnover, uh, at least compared to what you know we used to know. Uh, as a college basketball kind of roster cycle. So trusting Grant McCaslin and his staff, obviously, to identify and bring in some guys that will hit because they hit on basically 100% of the guys uh, that they brought in this last time around. So excited about that. Excited about the weekend as well as we get back to United Supermarkets Arena, Chris. And we'll be back tomorrow uh, to get everybody ready for that. Red Raiders and Bears, 5 o'clock Saturday afternoon as we wrap up the week. Hope you'll join us for that. Appreciate the time as always, Chris. Big home game coming up for the finale uh, at the right. USA on uh, Saturday at 5 o'clock. So we'll uh, we'll be back tomorrow and kind of break that down. One more time to get lathered up and uh, yell <laughs> at somebody in a different colored shirt at United Supermarkets Arena. So take advantage of it uh, if you haven't so far this year. For Chris, I'm Casey. Thanks for being out there. We hope to see you back for the next round on Locked On Texas Tech.